this is Trev. Welcome to my blog. Welcome to another exciting episode of Tips and Tricks. This time round we're going to do a small door skin repair on my van. Van door skin repair. Around a hinge that's split away. Well you'll see what I mean anyway. So included within this I'll show you a few bonding, welding techniques, how to fold an edge over. Uh, you're watching the video, you'll soon catch up. So looking at the rear doors on the van and the main issue I've got with the doors is the fact that it's badly damaged around the hinge area. What somebody's done in the past is they've just pop riveted this galvanised plate over the top to give it some kind of reinforcement. So I've taken the plate off and um, what we've got is what the problem was originally. And um, what's look, what looks to have happened to me is um, possibly it's got a lot to do with the fact that the hinges are badly worn out as well. So the hinges are flopping around everywhere, which is probably putting a lot of strain on everything. Um, also, the way that the original van was assembled probably wasn't the best. Um, on a modern day car, this would be some kind of cage with um, a floating threaded plate inside, which would move around. We're talking, you know, 1960s technology here, so this is just the way things were done. And um, so what I've done anyway, is I've realised that this was possibly mounted slightly lower than it should have been, either that or it's just been beaten down. And we've ended up with this situation where the, um, the door skin, for it to line up, this piece is pushed right down. Now, what I've done is I've take, taken this off because this is only ha hanging on by a thread and the other door is completely broken off. So I've taken this off, I've repaired it and welded it back in, in the same place. Because I've welded it back in, in the same place, it's slightly lower than it should be. So I shot myself in the foot slightly, but when you shoot yourself in the foot, you often realize that you could benefit yourself from it. So what I've done is I've given it some thought and I've come up with this plan so I've made myself a repair panel, 20 gauge steel, and I've cut out a reinforcement plate out of 18 gauge steel and spot welded it to it. So that kind of scenario isn't gonna happen as easily. And what I'll do is when I put that on, I use some um, polyurethane adhesive. I just put a good blob of it there, which will sandwich in and help bond that to that, which means that this reinforcement inside won't be moving from side to side if it wanted to. So um, yeah, I'll talk you through what I'm going to do. We'll get a bit closer in so you can uh, you can get a better viewpoint. So the techniques I'm going to show you in this video are pretty universal to any door skin repair really even on a modern day door, they're all pretty much the same, just crimped around on the edges. But what I'll, uh, what I'll show you are a few neat tricks um, so that you don't come in stuck as much as you possibly could do. And um, so what I've done, I've showed you in previous videos how to make yourself a bit panel up and mark it out. I've done exactly the same. And what I've done now is I'll put the panel over the top and I'll get it in the right place, so I get it spot on in the right place and bolt it down, utilising the original bolt holes to hold the panel down in place. Very good idea. Um, now, something I will talk you through, which is quite a useful little point, is you'll notice that I've put a return edge on the door skin section that I've made up. Now, if I'd left it at a right angle, what's going to happen is, well, what could happen is um, you'd line this up. So we'll say this is the new panel I've just made with just a right angle on it. So line this up, line that up. And what I would always suggest you do first is line it up and tack it in all four corners first before you start tapping the edge round. If you tap the edge round first, what's going to happen is 
As you're tapping the edge round, it's going to be moving around like that. Even if it's gripped up, it's going to be moving about. And then as it as it crimps onto the door frame, it will lock itself up at some stage so that it can't be moved. And if it's managed to go skew on the panel, you're going to end up with a situation where your gaps are all, all uneven around the edge of your patch. And um, where your crimped edge is going to be, that's going to be off as well. So always put your four tacks in first, at least four tacks, one in each corner. Don't go any further than that really. So you've got your four tacks in. Avoid the right angle edge. I appreciate if you're doing a lower half door section that goes all the way round, then it's going to be quite hard to put a return on it. But the reason for the return is, getting back to the original point what I was trying to make, is if you imagine um, you've got your right angle edge like that, you've only got a certain amount of steel from end to end. And the best way of describing it is if you put the end of your fingers on the inside of your knuckle, like that, well say this is the door skin, this is the door frame, as you tap the skin around, you'll notice that the top half of my hand moves to the left which means that you're dragging the material around the bend. As the material is going round the bend, it's getting shorter. What could happen is, you start off getting a nice parallel edge all the way along here, and then as you tap the edge down, as I said, you're dragging that steel around a corner, and it can only go the easiest way it wants to go. Now if you've tacked it already, so you've tacked your four tacks in, which you've got to do anyway, if you tack your four tacks in, the only place that that material can be taken from is this area here. And it means that the skin will be dragged round further than it wants to go. Which means that at the end of the day, you'll end up with a step. So that'll be stepped in there where your repair is and it'll step back out again. Now if this happens, happened to me many times, you know, um, but if this kind of thing happens, which is unavoidable sometimes, what you can do is you can over planish the repair, your little repair section afterwards. I'll show you how to planish it in a minute. So you basically got your panel hammer and dolly, so you've got your dolly underneath the screen, like that and you're planishing away, you're tapping this edge down. If you over planish this edge, you can actually, you're squashing the material flat. So you're compressing the steel and you're making it wider. So if you have got a step, if you over planish, you'll make it thinner, which isn't the ideal situation to have, but you're better off doing that and then bringing the edge of your panel back out again. That's if you have this problem, but like I said, if you put a good return edge on it already, you've already moved the material around the corner. So then when you line it up with the edge of the door skin, like that, you get a perfect, perfectly lined up. You tack it in your four places, bolt it down first, and then you know that it's pretty much lined up. As you tap it over, it's only got to move a millimeter and it's crimping down, and there's less likely likelihood of um, ending up with an uneven edge which is the last thing that you want really so what I'll do next is I'll uh, give you a quick demonstration of bonding it in this area bolting it down tacking it tapping the edge over and um, welding it round I was going to do the uh, a complete lower half door skin on this fan but the bottom of the door skins pretty rust free and there's no point making myself any more work than I need to so I've actually left the bottom of the door skin which is really nice because I hadn't really appreciated how nice these back doors are and they're not as flat as they look they're quite bulbous they've got quite a nice bit of shape to them which gives the the van its nice bulbous shape at the rear end well you can't be a bulbous rear end can you so yeah I'll get back to you after I've done that So I'm using this Tiger Seal product. It's a polyurethane adhesive sealant. 
and it's pretty good stuff actually. Now I appreciate there will be some movement in this stuff because it doesn't set rock hard like a structural two pack um, bonding glue, adhesive, whatever it's called. Um, this has got a slight bit of flex but because we've got such a wide surface area it's going to be pretty well bonded and it'll certainly make a difference to the strength properties in that um, hinge reinforcement. So what I'll do is I'll put a bit along there. I won't put too much because when we put this on the top the two panels are going to be flat together which means that it'll spread right out so I'm not going to go overboard. That'll do, that's plenty. Now, um, you notice I'm wearing uh, gloves. If you get that stuff on your hands, it ain't coming off. Your skin's got to wear off before it comes off. And so I'll just um, spread it out a little bit in the area. Make sure we get good coverage right up to the um, threaded parts. Just put a little bit more there actually. I appreciate there was never any of this around the door skin originally, but I will just put a little bit along there. Um, it's uh, modern practices to bond door skins on with uh, polyurethane adhesive or structural two pack glue. So I will just put a little bit along there. I'll just give it a little bit of extra strength as well. Again, I haven't gone absolutely mad there. So, um, put our panel over the top. Couple of new bolts. So, I've got our edge set nicely, square. I might even just take the edge in minutely because as we compress the fold, the fold's going to spread out as well. We don't want a situation where we've got the reverse effect and we've got too much steel sticking out along the edge. So I might just give that a little like tap. So the next thing I'll do is I'll tack it into place so that it can't move. So we've got our four tacks. The next thing I'll do is I'll grind the welds off. Very, very important this next stage. Grind these welds off. Reason being, when you come to plunge the skin the other side, if you leave these welds on, then what's going to happen is, you're going to hold the dolly flat on the back. Well, this will become the back then. So you have your dolly, it'll be held and it'll be held against a weld like that that's sticking, that's, uh, sticking down and um, then as you tap your edge around from behind your edge will then follow that weld so your edge will go sort of over a hump like that. So the best thing you can do at this stage is to get rid of that weld, grind it nice and flush and then we'll flip the door over and I'll show you planishing the uh, edge over. Okay, so I appreciate this might look a bit odd. This is the inside of the door and this is our lip, return lip, that I'm going to planish over now. So with our toe dolly, panel hammer, 
you put the dolly in the knee, like the pressure up, you just basically take the weight of the panel so that you're not beating the edge down, you're pinching the flange over. So there we go, it's um, crimped over, lovely, not a problem. This weld here is where I've welded the strengthening back on in the inside. Something I neglected to explain earlier was this uh, return lip. You want to be quite careful and measure your old return lip on the old skin so the two line up together. This has been a bit of a fluke on this because it's lined up perfectly well. I very often have it so that it's slightly wider than it should be and then end up having to grind a little bit off the inside or try and disguise it some other way but I mean it's it looks pretty good once I've welded this these two lips together and ground it off you'll never know the difference and uh, the alignment couldn't be any better and the profile is pretty spot on I'm very pleased with that so the next job is to get the welding finished off and then we'll try it back on the van. All the welding's completed and yeah it's come out pretty well I'm quite pleased with it. Um, one of the issues I've got is because it's drawn in slightly around the hinge only very slightly and the other issue I had as well before I even started with it, I neglected to explain before I started the video was this door was incredibly badly damaged right in the center with a huge dent right in the center with two big creases coming out each way actually folded up the door skin and when I got the uh, when I got the hinge hole cut out so I had the hole there as you've just seen I was able to reach my hand through the hole and uh, get a dolly up behind it and um, do a bit of uh, dent flipping on this to uh, manage to get it out really nicely. And um, the issue I've got now, although it's not a huge issue, is because this is drawn in slightly and also we had all this deformation going on in this area, I've actually got what feels kind of like a high ridge going down here and um, what I intend to do is do a tiny bit of heat shrinking in this area and uh, to try and relieve some of this although it's uh, not necessarily high it will just make the panel flow better it means I've got to put a little less filler in in this area I'm gonna to have to put some filler in it anyway because obviously I've welded it round so what I'll do is our fiberglass paste the area and um, just a very very minimal skimmer filler over the top of the fiberglass paste just to finish it off. Uh, I'll just explain a little bit more about um, using I suppose you call it a straight edge but it's not a straight edge it's like a curved straight edge it's just a simple strip of steel. So I've got this strip of steel this is uh, 18 gauge, 20 gauge would work just as well, it doesn't really matter what sort of thickness it is. But um, because it's just a flat piece of steel, it's got no strength to it whatsoever. And it just, real useful just to sort of lie across a skin like that. And uh, I mean I use it as a straight edge this way up, because it ain't going to bend that way. But that on its side, it's got no rigidity at all. So as you draw it along the panel, you can see that if I hold that down there, you should be able to see that we've got a low spot there where the hinge is, and then it goes high, and then it goes ever so slightly low just there, indicating our high area along there. We are only talking here guys, we are talking, you know, millimetre or so of difference. Like I said, I am being a little bit fussy. One other thing I'll just sort of mention, I think it's worth mentioning, is um, 
sometimes you can get things that call uh, feel like high spots when you've got a low so say you push something down if you've got a panel that's stressed in what you'll find is it'll stress you'll push the panel in it's stressed down and what you'll find is that you'll get this uh, wave effect I call it and um, I'll probably sketch it out explain it a bit better so we're looking at um, <laughs> Two pieces of uh, two pieces of pen that I've just drawn with a sharpie. So this is the profile of a door, just a regular curve. And then if you've got a depression in the panel, something pushing it down, or a dent, or something like that, maybe even a heat shrunk area. What you can often have right by the side of it is a raised area, and this is because the steel has got nowhere to go. You've shrunk something down, pushed it in, and the steel around it will rise up around it. Very hard to describe why it's doing this. I know in my head why and how it does it, but it's very difficult to get it across why it actually happens. And uh, I'm just trying to sort of feel people in here that don't really, they really need a basic understanding of why things are going on. So. What may happen is you'll have this scenario and you put your hand over it and you'll feel a big high spot there. I've said in previous videos, if you get this kind of thing happen, then the best thing that you can do is to relieve the dent first. But if it's like this hinge area that I've just welded in, there's nothing I can do about that now to raise that up. It's all welded and bonded down and to be honest with you, I'm being extremely fussy here just for the purposes of making this video. But what I'll do is I will, as this is fixed now, what I will do is I'll just heat shrink this area slightly to bring our profile more in line with the top one. Obviously, the more of an even profile we've got, the less filler you're going to have to put in but more importantly than putting a lot of filler in something is you don't want high spots uh, becoming an issue with your filler work and maybe I'll do another video one day about this issue with filling things but I would say that 90% of problems that people have when they are doing filler work on cars is all down to having high spots and not really understanding the difference between a high spot or a low spot because at the end of the day you're putting your hand over the panel and you're feeling an edge you're feeling a a difference in levelness which comes to a point so say i say i feel this area here so say I was to apply my filler like that. And so this is filler. Now, if you put your hand over that, you're gonna feel the high spot there. Now, is this high or is this low? This is the issue. This is the thing that trips most people up when they're doing filler work or trying to get things level is they're putting their hand over the top and they're feeling that edge. With it drawn out here, quite obviously it's low, but when it comes to the practice side of body work, it's very hard to distinguish. When everything's being rubbed down and it's all matte, you've got no reflection back, so you can't really see. And all you've got is your hands to tell you whether something's high or low, it's very hard. Now, if I want more filler in this, so I put more filler in it, like that. So this is now becomes our field area. We've rubbed it out and we've ended up rubbing it down. We think, yeah, okay. Put our hand over there and think, well, that's nice and level. But then we come to a difference again there. So we've got a difference here you're putting your hand over the area to uh, feel for levelness and you can feel an edge. Well, is this high 
or is this low? What many people tend to do is they'll put their hand over that. I mean, we can see again from this from this uh, sketch I've drawn, we can see that yeah, indeed it is high, but in practice it's a lot harder to tell. So you'll put your hand over it, and you might feel across there and think, "Wow, this is low. I need to put more filler in." And then what you do then is you put more filler in. So you bring it down to there. Can you see a pattern? emerging here <laughs> so you've put more filler in you believe this to be low you've put more filler in you rub your filler out again yeah it feels great from there to there lovely and even but you get to where it blends in with a panel and you've got this spot again is this high or is this low and this is the issue Okay, so we're all finished. I'm really happy with it. It's turned out fantastically well, as you can probably tell. And um, yeah, I'm really chuffed. Um, I've just plugged up these barge holes because the old barges have been pinched off the van and I didn't really like them anyway that much. So what I've decided to do is I got myself a lovely uh, old brass script barge, which I'm kind of intending on getting this chrome plated. Um, haven't looked into getting that done yet, but that was the plan. Get that chrome plated, and it's going to look so smart against the lovely fresh paintwork. So what I um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to epoxy coat this first before I fill it for corrosion protection reasons. <laughs> I hope it was good for you. Thank you very much for watching. And next video is going to be another door skin repair. A complete lower half door skin repair. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that you probably wouldn't have seen before. So well worth tuning in for. Bye for now. With reference to my last video, my air dryer for my compressor. Thank you very much to Fat Turbo Cars who's been in the compressor industry for 25 years and pointed out that my compressor was too close to the wall. I'd heard this before but completely forgotten all about this and I managed to budge my compressor forward by about four inches which now gives me a six inch gap between the fan and the wall which means that I've got greater airflow over the pump which is going to make a difference i would have thought thank you very much fat turbo cars Kiss me.